Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Good morning, so, Bob. And Emory, Melissa. is that like chick? Is that like chicken and out? <laughs> 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 Oh, you guys are now you're going to have to not right now, but you're going to have to explain that to Anders at least uh, <clears throat> sometime later yeah. on. What chicken? Out I, I think I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was pretty <laughs> obvious, right? Eh? Yeah. My, my, my <laughs> <computer> <laughs> <stopped> <laughs> <us>. <laughs> Been hanging around us too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, All right. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna have to leave the screen just for minutes. Uh, Amazon came to deliver something. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> um, I I started the recording. Let me uh, mention a couple of things, uh, especially since some uh, some of you are new. I do this every once in a while. Uh, <clears throat> this recording uh, goes on Facebook. I uh, I'm recording it now, and after we're done. I, I send you all a copy of it and also post it on my site uh, on Facebook, which is how some of you found out about us to begin with. So uh, if you don't want your picture or your name to appear on Facebook, uh, you don't have to do that. You, you uh, just uh, click off of the, uh, of the video and, and you can even change your uh, name as it appears on here if you want to. Uh, so that's up to you. Uh, also a little housekeeping thing. Uh, it's uh, if you have any possible uh, background noise or things like that, it works best if you mute yourself. Uh, and then uh, when when you want to uh, when you've got a question, when you want to say something uh, down at the bottom of your screen, there's a place called reactions and you can click on reactions and uh, you can there's a thing you can raise your hand. And if you look at my screen up in the left-hand corner, uh, there's a hand raised. So Jody uh, is administrating these things. She will, <clears throat> she'll look for that and she'll put in the chat <clears throat> who's up first. And, and so I'll, I'll see that and I'll call on you. If by chance I don't see it, uh, she or somebody will remind me. Uh, now, if you haven't figured that out, uh, and some, uh, it took me a long time to figure it out. Uh, you can just raise your hand like this. If you do that, keep your hand up uh, because we, we won't, uh, uh, I won't necessarily see you doing that. <clears throat> so if you're going to do it by that way, raise your hand up and uh, Jody will eventually see that and <clears throat> put it in the chat meeting. And uh, so then we'll, we'll be able to call on you. All right. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, Jamie Englehart's going to be with us tonight here uh, in Lawrence. This is a, a great book uh, by Jamie, uh, Myths and Mistranslations. Uh, now, other people have written things like this. Paul Young has, Steve McVeigh, and I've done some stuff. Uh, but this, this is a, a really good book uh, that just uh, debunks some common myths and things. Uh, here's myth number 38. There is a world leader who is called the Antichrist in the Bible. Well, that's a myth. Uh, and he explains it and gives the, all the reason behind it. <clears throat> he, he's really uh, very thorough in, in what he does. Okay, uh, another thing, a uh, <clears throat> little information on Roger Sprecher. Uh, I sent some of that to you all in the email. Uh, Roger's not with us this morning <clears throat> yet. Uh, he's, he's, uh, was, he moved to a, hotel, a motel here in Lawrence uh, on Friday, uh, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, he's going to, and some people with the local agency helped him do that. He'll be there probably for a couple of more days, and he's doing some <clears throat> intake and evaluation work with a, um, an organization here in Lawrence that hopefully will get him settled into another place. Uh, but the, uh, the his, his phone's not working there uh, in the room that he's in. So uh, we, we haven't been able to connect with him. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll find out later on in the day what's, what's going on with him. But uh, his, his eviction um, uh, experience Friday went about as well as it possibly could for all parties concerned. Uh, he seems to have a good uh, 
atti uh, attitude about all of that. And so, uh, you know, continue to pray for him and, and visualize him uh, uh, working well with the people who are trying to help him and to get him into a, uh, a good place where he can be looked after, but have some autonomy and, and where he can really flourish. Uh, and if you guys have uh, uh, individual uh, questions about that, just contact me and I'll be glad to visit with you more. Okay, <clears throat> another thing, um, we, uh, Ed and uh, Donna's uh, son-in-law and daughter, uh, Nick and Emily Moser, who are part of our group, <clears throat> they're not with us uh, on Zoom on Sunday morning, but they're very much a part of our group. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things that Nick uh, uh, has done for us is um, uh, de uh, developed the website that we had for the church for new life in Christ, which uh, over the last couple of years has, has become, uh, it doesn't, doesn't serve our purposes at all <laughs> in Nick's words, uh, which I realize it too, because it talks about where we meet in person and the children's programs and <clears throat> our statement of faith and all, all different things that uh, are, you know, have totally changed. So, uh, we're in the process of uh, coming up with a totally new website for the church, for us, for those of us who meet together on Zoom. Uh, it'll actually be on a, on a, it'll have a different website, a uh, different name. And uh, uh, so I would appreciate you guys' uh, your input, uh, not right now, but think about this and email me or text me or call me or whatever. I'd appreciate your input on what should we include in that uh, website, um, what what should we emphasize? Uh, what are some buzzwords that you would think uh, <clears throat> that we should use? Uh, and the point of the website is so that when people hear about us or go looking for a, an online church specifically, uh, you know they'll they'll know what they're going to experience when they get it. So if if there are buzzwords that uh, or things that maybe led you to us to begin with, uh, let us know about that so we can we can put that in it and that kind of stuff. So I would really evaluate, uh, evaluate. I would really appreciate, I knew there was an eight in there, uh, I haven't eaten yet, so maybe that's a, uh, a subconscious thing, uh, but I, I would appreciate your, uh, your input on that. <clears throat> okay, um, <clears throat> now I wanna, uh, we're gonna do a lot of discussion today and, uh, uh, hopefully, we're going to do a lot of discussion every week. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to teach for 30 or 40 minutes, and uh, but I, I, I want to move <clears throat> towards uh, towards much more discussion uh, because I, I just I love how we all learn from each other. But just kind of a heads up on that. So I want to start out by asking uh, asking you all a question, and I, I'll start with Dana. Dana, what what time is it? Well, it's 11, 12 or so. 11, 12. Okay. And uh, Emery, what time is it where you are? It's about 12, 12. 12, 12. Okay. And Joe, what time is it with you? 5.13 p.m. 5.13 p.m. Okay. Philip? You need to, you'll need to unmute yourself, Philip. Uh, it is here um, about 5.15. Okay. Uh, sorry, 6.15. 6.15. Yeah, All actually, right. um, to be actually really correct, it's 18.15. Aye, aye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Anders, what is it where you are? It's 18.14. <laughs> well, it's a second <laughs> off. All right. And Paula, what is it with you? I, I think we lost Paula for a minute. Oh, that's right. He was frozen up before. Okay, Robert, what time is it with you? It's 18.15 also here. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I mentioned earlier the, the link that I sent you all, the Chicago tuned is anybody know uh, what time it is? Does anybody really care? Uh, I want to I <laughs> talk about that uh, just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> if you ask Jesus what time it is, 
What would he say? <laughs> We'd say would, it is no. <laughs> pardon me? We'd say it is no. <laughs> we would say the it is now. Yeah, yeah, the omnipresent one. It is, he only has the eternal now. We have a sharp group here today. Uh, so <laughs> <clears throat> with Jesus, it's always now. Uh, and, you know, the words to that song start out with, uh, does anybody know, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anyone really care? Well, if you ask Jesus, he would say, the time is now. And he would say, well, yes, I care. Uh, yeah. and, and of course, he, he, he does care for us. We've talked before that God is the God of now. And uh, he indicated that uh, uh, in his name when Moses said to the burning bush that God was speaking from, you know, what's your name? And he said, I am that I am, and not, uh, not I was or not I will be, I am that I am. God is the God of now. And there, there are just some wonderful uh, books and teaching on that. Uh, Richard Rohr has a great book called The Naked Now. Anybody read that? Anybody read that book? Uh, it's, it's really good. And Eckhart Tolle, uh, you know, has a book about uh, now. There are other, other books about living in the now, being aware of the presence uh, <clears throat> of God. Uh, God is the God of now. Now, obviously, God sees the beginning from the end. God knows everything, but he, he chooses to live in the now. And when we're tempted to dwell on or worry about the past or the future, God's not there. He's with us right now in the present. He doesn't live in the past or in the future. And, um, you know, especially when we tend to worry about things in the future, uh, if, if there are things that uh, are never going to happen, <laughs> which most of the time they don't, uh, you know, why, why would God be involved in, uh, <clears throat> in that? And we, when we worry about things, we, we hardly ever, well, just the, the, the word worry, whenever we worry about things, we don't picture God being in that uh, with us. Uh, we may say, oh, well, uh, I'm so worried this is going to happen, but I know God will be with me. No, we really don't know that. We're just, we're just, uh, my opinion, we're just citing a phrase that we think is good is because we're Christians, we ought to say that. Uh, because uh, if we're worried, then we don't really believe that, uh, that God's going to take care of us. <clears throat> All right. Uh, living in the now, there, there are some things that are just inherent with that. A lot of times scripture will say, uh, depending on the translation, will say, look, or lo, L-O, or behold, or uh, see. Uh, they all uh, mean uh, be aware of what's really happening, of what's really going on. And <clears throat> It makes me think of uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18, which is a verse that uh, we talk about quite a bit, bit here. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote this, and uh, he I'm not going to quote it uh, exactly for you. It's in your handout. Um, I, I wasn't able to print out the things that I'm talking about today because my regular computer uh, chose not to live in the now anymore. And uh, <laughs> it only exists in the past. I've got a couple of laptops, one that I use for this. So I've ordered a new one. It'll come in Wednesday. It will be all my old stuff will be transferred to it. And then I, but I, I can't print things out uh, and at least until next Thursday or Friday or so. So um, uh, I'm, I'm some of the things I'm just going <clears> to <throat> paraphrase for you. But Second Corinthians 418, Paul is saying, uh, here, we don't, and by that he means when we live in the now, when we manifest as sons and daughters in Christ, when we experience the kingdom of God, we don't give, we don't pay attention to what we can see and hear and taste and touch with our five senses, <clears throat> which is all temporal. In a second, it's going to change. Instead, we see or look at or we focus on the unseen and eternal. So living in the now, 
which is where God lives, where Christ in us lives, where Papa and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are. Living in the now is <clears throat> being aware of what's, what's really happening in the unseen world, in the kingdom of God. Uh, other ways to phrase that are eyes on Jesus or uh, focus on God, F-O-G, fo focusing on God. <clears throat> That's where we can see what really is. And one of the things that I'm becoming more and more aware of uh, in, in the kingdom of God in the unseen realm is <clears throat> the law of attraction, the law of attraction. What we focus on, what we think about is attracted to us. It, it's, a, it's a scientific principle that's been proven now uh, with quantum physics, quantum spirituality, quantum mechanics, uh, whatever, however you want to talk about that. Th this is something that uh, um, uh, people have known for ages, uh, going back to there's things written about it 3,000 years before Christ and, and things in scripture, but the law, the law of attraction, what, what you focus on, what you think about is going to be attracted uh, to you, either positively or negatively can either be used for good or for evil. It's not a matter of, of God uh, uh, bringing about uh, <clears throat> only good things or whatever. It, it, it's, a, it's a principle. If you, you know, if, what, if you focus on and give all your attention to something that's not good for you, uh, that's going to happen. It's going to be attracted to you. It's going to uh, be brought about to you. Uh, you know, if, if you focus all the time on worrying about getting sick, I mean, JL could teach about this all day, but, uh, you know, and we're, if you, especially if you say that out loud, if you focus on being broke or losing your money or losing your health or being sick or uh, the world going to hell in a handbasket because of the election on Tuesday or whatever, whatever you focus on uh, is going to come about most likely at least in your experience of it. So uh, this law of attraction is uh, something that we're, we're going to be talking on more uh, in, in the weeks to come. Mike Popovich talks about that a lot too, Steve McVeigh and, and other people. All right. Um, where is Jesus right now? It's not a trick question. Where's he Jesus? Is in, yeah, Henry. He is in all of us. He is he everywhere. Is, he is in all of us, everywhere, all the time. <clears throat> now, first discussion question. What's he doing there? What is Jesus doing? Now, I, I've got something that I'm going to bring up and show you, but none of you have wrong answers. Uh, so, uh, you know, all of these things are things we'll learn about from each other, but let's just take a little time and you guys tell me what's Jesus doing there? What's he doing in you? Well, I'm thinking about the relationship of the Trinity, the son giving himself to the father, giving <clears throat> himself to the son through the Holy spirit. Is that the divine Diane's the divine circle of the union of the Trinity is the giving and receiving. It's like the big divine wheel, you know? So this relationship of the Trinity in Christ and the Holy Spirit with the Father, that's what's happening on the inside of us. So often when I think that, that the scripture says we're partakers of the divine nature, you could translate this, we're partakers of a divine relationship. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Kitsy? He's living and loving. He's living and loving. Yeah, Andre said he's giving. Kitsy says he's living and loving. Yeah, good. What else is he doing inside of us? Terry, were you going to say something? Yeah, I just can't decide which one of these things I'm supposed to be doing. Raising yeah. my hand, okay. Yeah. Um, 
he is supplying me peace. Yeah, supplying and, you peace. And giving me confidence that he has everything under control all the time. All the time, yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, Dana? Um, I was going to say he's completing the good work he began in me. And that's his job, not mine. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Henry, did you have something? Yeah, he's uh, growing me in the grace and knowledge of uh, uh, the Trinity like uh, Andre was talking about. Yeah, good. And Philip, you, you wrote something. You want to share that? Yeah, I'm saying um, I first wrote Christ is sharing his life with all of us right now, but then I added it a little bit more. I saying Christ is, or he is sharing his own uncreated life with the Father with all of us right now. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I'm so glad I asked you guys to share with us. This is, yeah, I just, I love how we learn from each other. Who else? What's, uh, what's Jesus, what's he doing in there? He's looking for an outlet. He's and, looking for an outlet. Let me out yeah, of here. <laughs> well, no, we're his hands and feet. I mean, we can talk about what he's doing in us all we want to, but, but, but his purpose in us, his purpose in us is to, we're, we're to be an outlet for him. Uh, we, we are him in the earth now. And so he's, He's he's he, he he's looking to utilize us as an expression of him. Yeah, I would certainly agree with that. Yeah, Melissa. I forgot another thing. Um, he's also sharing his Christ is also sharing his life with the Father and the Holy Spirit, and we have been in it for a very long time already. Yeah, and it's still ongoing. Yeah, that's Perichoresis, of course. He invited yeah. us and included us in that relationship. Yeah. yeah, I got that from Baxter Kruger a couple of years ago. It blew my mind. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Melissa. Um, I was just going to say he's doing life with us. He's experiencing everything we experience together with us. He, uh, yeah, he certainly is. Stanley. He's sharing wisdom with us. He's sharing wisdom with us. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? What's he doing in there? <clears throat> Emery? Hopefully he's using us to bring others to him. Indeed. All right. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read if I can get it up on my laptop here. Um, scripture that I sent to you. I won't, uh, I'm not going to read all of the, uh, uh, this is from the mirror. It's Romans 8, 28 to the end of the chapter. I'm not going to read all of the uh, footnotes in it, <clears throat> but uh, uh, if you don't have the mirror, I, I'd highly encourage you to get it. You can, you can get the app for it and get it online. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's only the New Testament and it's not finished yet. Uh, uh, Francois Dutoit, uh, who's one of the, uh, people that many of us have already learned from us in the process of translating it <clears throat> but here's how he writes uh, how he uh, translates Romans 8 uh, starting in verse 28 um, and and this is the apostle Paul writing here <clears throat> meanwhile we know that the love of God causes everything to mutually contribute to our advantage his master plan is announced in our authentic identity. Most of you who have had some Bible experience have heard that translated before. We know that God is working all things for the good for those who love him. Well, uh, it can be translated for those who love him. It can also equally, uh, an equally valid translation is, the love of God, or because God loves us, he's working everything, uh, working everything out for the good for us. We know that the love of God causes everything to mutually contribute to our advantage, 
or we know that God is continually working all things for our good. That's another thing that I wanted to share with you all that Jesus is doing in us. That's what he's doing. He's, he's doing all the things that you guys said, absolutely. And he's also continually working all things for the good for us because he loves us. And that's, that's something that he, I'm confident he wants us to be aware of all the time. Now, we can't always see that with our five senses because it doesn't always appear uh, that things are working for our benefit. But in the unseen and eternal realm, Jesus, Papa, and Grace are continually working all things for the good for us. And one of the things that I'm becoming more and more aware of is they want us to become more and more aware that they are in that they are doing that. They they want us to experience what they're actually doing. Um, and experience the, the word no that's translated K-N-O-W in in, uh, uh, in English translations <clears throat> has has a much deeper meaning than just intellectual knowing. Uh, <clears throat> it's it's intimately experiencing <clears throat> something that's going on. <clears throat> it's experiencing what God is doing rather than talking about God. It's not intellectual knowledge at all. It's actually experiencing personally <clears throat> uh, one with, and you guys said this in different ways, it, it's, it's knowing what God's doing right now, experiencing it. Jesus is experiencing life with us. We're experiencing life with him, knowing Jesus is experiencing what, in, at least in part, it's experiencing what he's doing right now and seeing how he's working all things for the good. Now, we don't always see, well, I don't think we ever see everything, but we, we don't always see exactly what he's doing, working all things for the good right now, uh, because in our five senses, it can certainly appear like, well, this ain't good, but a huge part of what he wants us to do, that's, that's where trust comes in. Trusting that no matter how things look to us, we can trust that God is indeed working this and every situation out for the good. Stacy, You know, Paul, uh, I was going to keep my mouth shut, but you just keep poking at me here. Uh, the, the thing that, that, that Jesus wants me to understand right now, if it's not what he wants you to understand or anyone else at the moment, that's cool. But you talk about where Jesus lives, and I believe he does live in the past, present, the future the only time we can experience god is in the present right and you ask what he's doing in there and it's exactly what i was going to say he's he's preparing all things for our good for his glory right and uh, but he's not just doing that right now he's doing that tomorrow he's already preparing tomorrow he's setting that table for us tomorrow so why do we have to worry about it you know i work with people sometimes and and, and uh, they say well i've got this thing going on i just hope jesus gets there before i do but Jesus is already there. He's already there and he's already got it working out. I used to tell him, I hope, I hope he gets there at the same time as you do. But no, today I'm very thankful to understand that he's already there. And he's already got things working out. So I just wanted to spit that out. I'm with you, brother. Yeah, no, I, and, and I agree with that. Well, one of the things in, in inner healing um, that uh, uh, is extremely helpful is when we, uh, if we've got something in the past that's, uh, uh, we can't seem to escape or get rid of or let go. Uh, uh, there's, we can ask, and I have done this, we can say, Jesus, where were you when this happened or that happened? Uh, and he, he will show me. He, and always he will say, Paul, I was right there with you when that was happening. And I was working it all for the good. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, he, he, you know, he's in the past. He was there with us. And we, we also, we know from scripture and 
but, uh, but we also know from uh, the law of attraction and visualizing and things like that, he is in the future. He's already there preparing things for us and working things out and that kind of stuff. Um, but we can only, I think you said this, Stacy. we can only experience him in the now. Is, am I summarizing saying that correctly? Exactly. It's like when you're watching a videotape, you know, you're seeing wherever it's at right now, but what's ahead has already been laid out. What's behind, so you've already seen it, you know, and if you don't have a full understanding of what's already happened, you can look back and see, oh, that's where God was. I've seen people do this and it, it makes me so happy. People that, that didn't really have any notion about God, they're able to look back and say, oh, yeah, man, if God wasn't with me, then I wouldn't be here now, you know. Yeah, and, uh, that, that whole thing carries so forward. It's just, it's really cool, but yeah. It is really cool. Yeah. All right. Romans 8.28, the mirror. Uh, God causes everything to mutually contribute to our advantage. Verse 29, he has always known us face to face and engineered us upon the mirror horizon of his faith to be jointly fashioned in the same mold and image of his son. We see the authentic pattern of our lives preserved in the incarnate one. He is the firstborn from the same womb that reveals our Genesis. Jesus is the firstborn and we are all born just as he was born. He's the firstborn. We're, we're not... Uh, uh, we're not a second class thing or a different species or whatever. Uh, we come from the same womb that he came from. Verse 30, Jesus reveals that we pre-existed in God. <laughs> we could talk all week on that. Jesus revealed that we pre-existed in God. He defined us. He rendered us innocent and also adorned us with splendor and esteem. And, you know, we teach about that a lot from Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1. <clears throat> Verse 31, all these things point to one conclusion. God is for us. So who can prevail against us? I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to read the rest of this chapter, but I'm going to come back to that because I, I, want, to, I want to spend some time with that. <clears throat> One conclusion. God is for us. Who can prevail against us? Verse 32. The gift of his son is the irrefutable evidence of God's heart towards us. He held nothing in reserve, but freely gave everything we could ever wish to have. This is what our joint sonship is all about. Everything we lost in Adam is again restored to us in Christ. Sin left mankind with an enormous shortfall. <coughs> Grace restores mankind to excellence. God has identified us. Who can disqualify us? His word is our origin. No one can point a finger. He declared us innocent. Now, obviously, people can come against us or point a finger against us or whatever, but they can't uh, prevail. <clears throat> what further ground can there possibly be to condemn mankind? In his death, he faced our judgment. In his resurrection, he reveals our righteousness. The implication cannot be undone. He now occupies the highest seat of authority as the executive of our redemption in the throne room of God, and we are right there with him. And verse 35, what will it take to distance us from the love of Christ? You name any potential calamity, intense pressure of the worst possible kind. Come on now. He's saying <laughs> you can't come up with anything that is not covered here. Name any potential calamity, intense pressure of the worst possible kind, claustrophobia, persecution, destitution, loneliness, extreme exposure, life-threatening danger, or war. Now, this is, I didn't see this till just this morning. Look at this. Let me quote scripture to remind you. Because of our association with you, God, we were reckoned as sheep to be slaughtered. We have been jointly slain on that day. 
he's he's quoting scripture there. It's Psalm 44, 22. He's quoting scripture. Now get this. This I'm not going to go down this rabbit trail, but I want I want to just I want you to get this. He's quoting scripture. He says, let me, I'm quoting scripture. Verse 37, he says, on the contrary, you get that? He says, I'm disagreeing with that scripture. On the contrary, in the thick of these things, our triumph remains dis uh, beyond dis dispute. His love has placed us above the reach of any onslaught. Now, again, I'm not going to dwell on that, but this is just one occasion where Jesus, of course, did this, but where the Apostle Paul quotes Old Testament scripture and then says, let me tell you, it's different than what you read there. All right, but that's not the point of what I'm talking about today. That's a side thing. <clears throat> okay, um, verse 38. This is my conviction. No threat, whether it be death or life, whether it be celestial messengers, demon powers or political principalities for those of us who are facing elections coming up no threat no threat whether it be death or life celestial messengers demon powers or political principalities nothing known to us at this time or even in the unknown future no dimension of any calculation in time or space, nor any device yet to be admitted, has what it takes to separate us from the love of God unveiled in our Lord Jesus Christ. This is, uh, this is one of the, the greatest passages in scripture ever. Um, we literally could take weeks to uh, discuss this. Um, and I... Uh, I'm going to resist the urge to, to talk about different things there because I, I want to just talk about one verse, 31. God is for us. Who can prevail against us? God is for us. Who can prevail against us? At any given time, Jesus is in us. It's always now. He's always working all things for the good, which includes the ultimate reconciliation of all. And so if he's doing that and he's for us, who can be against us? Now, people can come against us, but they can't ultimately prevail because he's always working all things for the good. One other scripture with that, and then we're going to discuss that. This is a fascinating scripture in John 5, 17. This is something that one of the first things that Jesus did, among many, that really ticked off the religious leaders. He's, John 5, 17, he says, every day my father is at work. He's continually working. And I am too. Jesus, God the Father and Jesus are continually working. They are continually working all things for the good for us. So who, and if they're for us, who can, and if they're all powerful, <laughs> who can be against us? So when the rubber hits the road, when something happens in our life that we don't think is good or doesn't seem to be good or appear to be good, in the light of scripture that Jesus is continually working and the Father and the Holy Spirit are continually working all things for the good and they're for us, then how then shall we live, as Chuck Colson would say? What, what does that mean when things don't appear to be good for us, but we know that Jesus is in us, he's in the now, he's working all things for the good, he's for us, so who can be against us? What do you think? I think Anders wants to say something, Paul. <laughs> Anders says no. Not yet, anyway. 
Thank Dana? Um, <clears throat> I'd say that that eliminates fear because, uh, you know, we're loved and it's all taken care of and we're safe. <laughs> we're okay. Yeah. yeah. No it matter does, what it feels like. <laughs> it does eliminate fear when we know that and knowing uh, in, in the, in the biblical word is experiencing it when we know it and we experience, which is different than just talking about it. It's uh, knowing God, experiencing God is way different than just talking about God. Robert. Yeah. Um, uh, it was not so many years ago before I realized uh, something I had read, I believe, from Baxter Kruger or someone that really these moments of realization, these are, we would call those are, are real moments of faith. Somehow you suddenly understand something that you did not understand before, and it just jumps in your mind and it just it fills you up, man. And that, that I, I, I agree. Suddenly I realized now that's a, uh, what did he call that kind of moment? Um, it's an oso or something like that. Yeah. Aha. What a uh -huh. moment. An yeah. aha moment. Yeah. Hold oh, Eureka. Yeah. Eureka. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Eureka. Good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Okay, now Anders finally realized what Emory knew he wanted to say. <laughs> so well, I shall not mention what Emory and I was talking about yesterday, but uh, I can tell you later. But uh, uh, no, uh, what I what I really uh, feel and experience uh, nowadays uh, um, since I got on this road where I, I, I got to know there is no hell in that way that we talk, used to talk about, is that I have been more uh, secure. I, I, feel, I, I feel that I'm not afraid in the same way anymore. And uh, I think you all know, I, I was on, at the hospital a couple of days uh, the other week, but uh, uh, it, it, it seems like whatever, happens with me, I can lay myself down and be, uh, feel um, secure. Uh, I, I don't find the right word. In, in Sweden, we call it trygg. It's like you are, you are, you are, you are not afraid anymore. And that's, uh, that's really something for someone who has lived all his life being afraid of death and uh, anxiety and uh, depressions and and I still have depressions uh, and feel sometimes I feel I, I don't have any um, energy to do anything or or anything like that but I, I feel that I'm I'm not afraid anymore and that's something really perfect love cast out that fear didn't it and uh, yeah and it, it again that can't be just a scripture that we memorize and say uh, at the right time to make us sound spiritual or whatever. <clears throat> you have to experience that, which yeah. you have. And I think we all, we all have, of course, then yeah. we, we need to remember that over and over. JL? Well, it's about our revelation of righteousness. Our revelation of righteousness. That's what we have to earn. We have to do something to earn that, right? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. It's all it's all brought to us and from from the spirit, you know, the spirits with the spirit and the Jesus within us is what gives us that revelation. We also become more more and more righteousness conscious rather than sin conscious because sin's no more. Right. And it all 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 that leads to our authority over our circumstances, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all, and it's all about, it's all about how we approach everything 
and how God leads us to approach everything. And he is, has worked everything out. And if we listen to him, he'll tell us what to yeah. say to bring everything to fruition. Well, that's absolutely true. I, I can't give you the reference now, but you guys can look this up. The scripture that I would, the way it's generally translated incorrectly is um, be aware of righteousness and sin not. And yeah. of course, the way that's taught is, is be aware that you got to work to become righteous and don't sin. <laughs> what it means is, be aware that you are righteous and not sinful. That's what it means, uh, which is <laughs> completely different. All right, uh, Anders? Yeah, I, I wanted to add it to what I was saying before, that uh, um, sometimes I still can ask God, please, God, let me have you, uh, let, let me have this great uh, experience that I heard some, some people had with a, with a close encounter with the love of you uh, floating through, through my body and everything like that. But when I, when I, when I, when I said what I, I just said before, I found out I, I have had that experience, but not in that uh, uh, special uh, experience i i have had it but in a in a long uh, uh, slow work inside of me yeah it's good andre uh, i would say for for me in my personal experience even though i had all the the evangelical doctrines about salvation and sin and all those things and the love of god I, I came to realize at one time, it's like it became like a real revelation that uh, I really underestimated the reach of the cross, you know, because the cross is basically how far does it reach back all the way into the beginning, all the way into Adam, and how far does it reach into the future, you know, the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world, you know. So we could ask ourselves, well, is there any sins that are not on that cross? Not a single one. He's the mm -hmm. Lamb of God that took away the <clears throat> sins of the world. And that's really important that we get a full revelation of, of how far in the past and in the future that that cross is reaching from the beginning to the end of time as far as uh, human history is concerned. And so the the problem with being able to experience the love of god has to do with sin consciousness the way i understood it in my own life in a way because if i if if a sin consciousness is removed sin is not an issue anymore because sin died on the cross because jesus became sin for us and he died and rose again to die no more and so sin is a become a irrelevant it's like trying to outrun your shadow, you know, like it's sin has already been dealt and it's finished with for all of humanity. And so when that sin consciousness is removed through the full revelation of the cross, then you never self disqualify yourself anymore to experience the love of God, because you know that now is the time of his favor. Now is the day of salvation, you know, the ongoing salvation, the healing of your soul, the restoration of your soul. So, so when is when you say now is the time of his favor? Well, God, it's always in the now. <laughs> it's an it's always in the now. now. It's yeah. always in the now. Yeah. Thank you, Andre. I'm not going to uh, to get into this other than to uh, uh, just mention it. Uh, you know, I've talked a lot about my new book which some of you all are in, there's a chapter, there's a section in this about Andre and his path, uh, his past. And also uh, in it is the, uh, the, the, the number of uh, the podcast interviews that I did with him. When, when you see this kind looking, gentle, well-spoken uh, man of obviously some past experience, uh, by that I mean as old as me, uh, you would have 
no idea of his past. And uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you now, maybe, maybe sometime we'll, uh, we'll take a morning or two or a month or something. And uh, just take 10 or 15 minutes on some of you guys who want to, to tell your story, but uh, uh, Andre has a story uh, that uh, uh, if you uh, uh, met him in a coffee shop, uh, you, you wouldn't have any idea, which is the, I'm pretty much the same, the true with same thing true with all of us. So, Read about that in uh, the book. Uh, I'd encourage you to listen to uh, the podcast. Watch watch the video. Uh, on a separate thing, right there. Before I forget, how many uh, the the podcasts that I do come out uh, uh, at, just on audio as a podcast, but I also put them out as a video on YouTube. And I, I'm thinking of uh, I might be not getting the best might not be getting your best for the money that uh, we all use to support this with one of those platforms. How many of you actually listen to the podcast, not the video part? Each. Dana, okay, you each? I, sometimes, I, I do, it's random. Sometimes it just depends. Yeah. Okay, and Jody does. How many of you watch the video? I do that too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. More of you watch the video. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> the the videos, uh, the YouTube videos are free to produce. Uh, the the podcast costs me about three hundred fifty dollars a month to do, and I'm I'm trying to figure out to, uh, if anybody's actually listening <laughs> to the podcast, and uh, uh, if it wasn't available, would they? Uh, watch uh, the video. Of course, when I say watch the video, you can listen to the video uh, just as uh, easily as you can watch it. So if you're driving in the car, you can, you know, you can put the YouTube uh, video on and listen to it. So I haven't made a decision about that, but it's just something that, uh, uh, that uh, um, I'm thinking about. Okay. Uh, which again, which I really appreciate your all's input to it. All right. Uh, I'm going to wrap some things up on this. I've got to uh, see some questions here that I want to answer. And then uh, I'll try to do this in three or four minutes and then we'll have the rest of the time to continue this great uh, discussion. Um, okay. We're talking about, I've talked about several times, uh, experiencing uh, as, as opposed to knowing um, one of the, the scriptures that I've, I just have been thinking a lot about is in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, where, where Jesus tells us that we are the light of the world. And uh, Bob alluded that to that before, that Jesus is looking uh, for, for an outlet, or uh, in other words, what, uh, what can we be doing? What, uh, and we don't have to do anything. We can't do anything to earn God's favor, to get him to love us more or less or anything. Uh, but what, what do we do uh, in, uh, in our life? What does Christ do uh, as us? Well, certainly to a large extent, we are the light of the world. And that's something that, that's not, I mean, we can sing this little light of mine, let it shine. <clears throat> we can quote the verse and all of that kind of stuff, but experientially knowing what it's like to be the light of the world is <clears throat> Uh, it, it actually experiencing that is a whole nother thing. And we are, we literally are, Jesus said it, we are the light of the world to everybody <clears throat> that we come uh, in, in contact with. And experiencing that, being aware of that is so important. Now, I, I think experiencing Christ, experiencing who we are, experiencing our oneness with him and the mind of Christ is, is arguably the single most important thing for coming out of darkness into the light. Uh, we, we've got to experience it and be aware of it. And this whole awareness thing is, is what I want to finish up with. Um, it's, it's just being aware of of what God is doing right now. And one of you mentioned this before, to be aware of, of what Christ is saying to us. Uh, 
One of the guys that I used to love to listen to back when I was in business was a fellow by the name of Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, not the sports writer, but a guy who was a, like a motivational speaker and author. And one of the things he said that I learned in the early 1980s that was so important to me, and it still is when I remember it, uh, he said, wherever you are, be there. Wherever you are, be there. And the illustration he used was, he said, you know, <clears throat> I can be in my office working hard, involved in something, and all of a sudden my mind goes to, oh, I wish I was on the beach with my family. And, and you go to think, or he said, I can be on the beach with my family, and my mind will go, I ought to be working um, and focusing on, on those things. He said, no, no, wherever you are, be there in the now. I think that really, uh, uh, to me at least, uh, has special meaning with being and now. Be aware of where you are. And uh, now is always the time to be aware. So how, how do we become uh, aware? Uh, you know, does anybody really know what time it is? Does, does any, anybody really care? What's it like to trust all of these different things? What's it like to know that God's for us and to be aware of, of God's goodness and that he's working all things for the good? Well, it's to recognize that, to be aware of that in any given moment. And as one of you said before, just ask, you know, Papa, Jesus, Grace, Holy Spirit, whatever, however you want to say it, just ask show me, Lord, show me what you want me to be aware of. And included in that is, Lord, show me what you want me to say and what you want me to do. Just becoming aware of that. And I, I, I took the opportunity intentionally to do that on our trip last week. Uh, Kitsy and I were uh, in Colorado all week, and we got to spend wonderful times with uh, a good friend of ours in Salina uh, and uh, with Mike and Barb Popovich and their kids. Uh, and they arranged for a tour of us, for us, uh, a private tour at the Air Force Academy where they went to school. And then with our friends, Earl and Suzanne Knowlton and their kids and grandkids. And uh, of course, we experienced people at, at restaurants, at Seven Falls, at uh, uh, gas stations and quick shops and uh, when, you know, all the different things that we did. And I, I just intentionally made up my mind in advance that I was going to be aware of what was going on with everybody I'm with, with every place we are. And I think Kitsy always does this, or at least she certainly appears to be aware of other people uh, what emotions they're giving off, or uh, <clears throat> does it look like <clears throat> something's on their mind that you know we can encourage them about, or whatever? Uh, just being aware, and it can just simply be uh, like sitting on a bus, like we were going up to Seven Falls and seeing the uh, the bus driver right in front of us, and just saying. Uh, Papa, what, what do you want me to be aware of about this bus driver? Is there anything you want me to, to say to her or to, uh, to do or whatever? And um, sometimes there's nothing, but many times there is something. And there, many times there's something that, we, that, that he will show us to say or to do. Uh, and the other person will go, how did you know about that? Or what possibly made you ask that question? Or what, you know, that's exactly what's going on with me. You know, what, what made you think about that? Um, and, and I want to just touch on one thing about how do, how, do we, how do we do that for those of us who uh, haven't really done that or if it sounds so mystical. Uh, and Melissa does a great job of this with the new post that she's doing, the little short uh, affirmation things every day. At the bottom of that, she talks about breathing in and breathing out. And uh, there are different ways to do that, but a very simple thing uh, to get in the position where we can hear from uh, Christ who's in us and continually working in us and doing us is to still our mind and to slowly breathe in through our nose like for four seconds, slowly breathe in, focus on that breathing, hold that breath for four seconds, 
release it slowly for four seconds and don't take another breath. Just stay there for four seconds, you know, approximately. And to do that two, three or four times, whatever it takes. And in the process, you know, just, just be thinking, be aware of what's going on and ask the spirit in you to hey, show me, show me what you want me to see now, what you want me to know, what you want me to say, what you want me to do. And then listen and just listen. Now, sometimes we won't hear anything, uh, but many times we will. And that's, that's a, uh, uh, a proven way for many people <clears throat> to be able to hear something in the moment, in the now, right now uh, from God that helps us then to relate to somebody else. Or, you know, sometimes he'll just say, hey, pray for that person or talk to them or whatever. All right. So uh, I'm going to answer one question and you guys have the rest of the time. Um, Philip asked, when am I going to be uh, starting the Pure Light Walker course? Uh, probably three weeks from now, Philip, I'm, uh, you know, just getting back from uh, um, vacation. I've got several things on my plate and some stuff that I, uh, but that's, that's one of them. Uh, and uh, uh, in some format or another, I'm going to be doing that on Sunday mornings and then have another uh, two other times during the week, uh, one for people overseas. So it would be like six, seven o'clock in the evening. So uh, you all can participate in it. Uh, and then another time during the week uh, for those in, in the, the Americas where we can have and the discussion times to talk about it. And I'll, I'll provide all the materials and the videos and everything with that. So uh, keep keep asking me about that, you know, Philip. I've got it on my list of things to do and it's in one of my stacks that I got, boy, I look around and I see my piles of things to do. And I, I need another week uh, after my vacation just to uh, get to the piles of things, but I am getting to it. Okay. In the time uh, remaining, what, uh, what comments, questions, thoughts do you guys have? Uh, I was on a call this morning and uh, there was a Buddhist monk on the call. Interesting guy. And um, he was talking about meditation. And uh, what he described is exactly what you just described. Well, it's the same thing you do if you're going to take a long shot with a rifle. I mean, that you, you, you stop everything. Just, you just put everything on pause. You take a deep breath and then and, and let it out. And then you take another breath and hold it. And that, by the way, for you shooters is when you squeeze. But but that's exactly what he described this morning. He he uh, uh, he, he was talking about, and it was very interesting to listen to him. And and uh, uh, but it's interesting that here we come with uh, concepts from the Buddha, huh? Yeah, truth is truth, no matter yep. uh, no matter uh, who says it. And as uh, as Don Keithley uh, says often, read wide. Don't be afraid to, that you're going to be possessed by a, a demon or a new age spirit or uh, whatever, you know, read wide and, you know, uh, appropriate the good and, you know, let the stuff that's not for you, uh, let it go. Yeah. Well, I, I pointed out to him that I love the Zen and the Zenner, just, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and he, he, he appreciated that. Nice guy, man. I, I really enjoyed meeting him this morning. Good. Good. All right. Philip, you're up next and then Melissa. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about um, when you mentioned about experiencing um, Christ or experiencing God uh, mm -hmm. and um, relating it to uh, meditation. And what came into my mind straight away was the difference between having relational knowledge and cognitive knowledge about God. I don't know why that, and it's something that stayed with me for a very long time and it come back to me and I'm thinking, I'm wondering why. So I thought, well, it's probably because of my religious background where I was taught to know the word of God and it was only cognitive or 90 to 95% cognitive and maybe 5% relational. But I don't remember ever being taught to have relational knowledge about God much at all. 
And now I'm thinking, is relational knowledge and experiential knowledge the same thing? That's my question. Yeah. Yeah, of course it is. Is it not Relate further? Is it not more than just relational? Well, how can you how can you be more than relational? Well, I'm thinking that um, if you're listening and you're being aware of what God is, you're just listening, but you're not really getting to know him alone. It's maybe further. I don't know. That's why I'm asking the question. That's all. Well, I think I see what you mean. Um, uh, Joe had to leave early, so uh, I understand that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, in, in any relationship, if all we do is listen, um, then it's, it's a one-sided relationship. And that's, that's not what God wants at all. It's a participatory thing. Uh, not only do we listen, uh, but we respond and we ask questions and we ask uh, uh, and, and we share our, our feelings and uh, our fears and, and all of these other things. C certainly it's a particip participatory thing. Melissa and then Bill. Um, okay, I'm unmuted. Um, I've had several thoughts this morning, so I'll try to narrow them down. But um, you know, one of them was, um, man, it really, I really needed to hear what you said about living in the now doesn't, um, well, what I wrote down is that living in the now doesn't mean staying grounded to our senses. It's staying aware of the unseen world. So, you know, like Kitsy's EOJ and FOG that we all love so much. Because, um, you know, I, I was taught, well, the, a lot of, for the most part, the whole baby boomer generation <laughs> was taught, stay grounded, keep your feet on the ground, keep your head out of the clouds. <laughs> and so, and, and even in um, therapy, one theory or one practice to help people get over trauma and, and the way they respond to trauma, um, like when they're triggered is what I'm trying to say. Um, not when the trauma is happening, but when they're triggered to remember it later, is they have you be aware of your senses. Um, you know, what describe what you see in the room, describe what you feel, um, to, to touch, you know, you, they even have you hold an ice cube in your hand and think about what it feels like just to get you back to the now. But um, it goes much deeper than that. <laughs> um, our senses can tell us um, one thing, but staying aware of Christ in us and with us um, helps me a whole lot more than just those therapeutic practices, in other words. Um, I didn't say that very well, but I hope I came through with what I meant to say. Another thought that occurred to me is that when we talk about the past and the future, it's our past and our future. Um, for God, time is not linear. It's all, you know, it's like you said, it's all now. And even our spirit, the part of us that's eternal, um, it's always now. So, yeah, so um, why would we ever um, worry about the future <laughs> or dwell yeah. on the past? Yeah. And I'm saying that to myself more than anything, because I, I tell you what I, amazes me about God every time is exactly what I needed to hear, I hear. <laughs> I woke up this morning tempted to focus on worry about finances <laughs> and you know where they're going to come from in the future that was the my first thought upon waking and I and then I get online and I do our devotion this morning our you verse to smoke devotion and it's all about do not worry <laughs> not thinking about the future and not dwelling on the past and then I read my email all about do not worry, do not fear, and then this, the Zoom, um, same thing. So um, clearly, God speaks to us. Well, he exactly. does indeed. He does indeed. And uh, Mike Popovich is teaching this week, 
in boy it's uh it's really good for that I, i'll send you a note about that uh, melissa but that it's really good about that and for those of you who uh uh, if you'd like to get Melissa's daily uh, little short uh, affirmation thing, uh, just send me an email or if, if you know her, ask her. And uh, they're really good, along with JL's posts that he puts out uh, every day. They're also very good. And uh, uh, they both put those on the, uh, on the Messenger site as well as other places. So I encourage you to look at them. All right. Uh, just a couple of minutes left. Bill, it's all up to you. All, it's all yours. <laughs> Well, I hate to take up the last of your minutes, folks. I was take really, them. I was really going on what you were saying about a relationship, and uh, the Lord really been dealing with me. I've been in a hospital and all that stuff with uh, the people that I was meeting and stuff, and just talking about being a light and the light of the world and all of that. And I asked the Lord, I said, you know, what is it that I need to know? And uh, he actually gave me something, and I wrote it down. I don't know that she went a, long enough to hear it, but it, it's a, a little ways in there. And he said it has to do with agenda. And I have, I have known for a long time that, uh, you know, Paul had a, I mean, Peter had a problem. His agenda was different than what the Lord's was. That's the reason that he made the, the choice. And so I asked him about an agenda. And he gave me this. If you've got a couple minutes, I'll read it to you. Do you mind? Go for, go for it. That as I woke up the other morning, the Lord said to me, Bill, come, let's take a walk. He said, Peter and I walk this way. You have read what Peter said on that faith today. I asked Peter, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. But even though he knew me, he never really understood. For when I told him, what would take place when we entered into the city, that I would be beaten and abused and crucified without pity. Peter then rebuked me, saying, Lord, this will not happen to you. The miracles, the healings, and the kingdom, that's what you're here to do. I said, get behind me, Satan. You're a hindrance to me. You're only thinking of your agenda, of my father's concern you cannot see. Then Jesus looked at me with loving eyes. Then he said something. He said, then then said, there's something you can learn today. Come with me into the city. Then you'll understand what I'm going to say. As Jesus was dragged into the temple, Peter and the ten weren't far behind. A young girl confronted Peter. Do you know this man, Peter? Peter denied him three times. This didn't fit Peter's agenda. I was supposed to set up the kingdom and rule. So Peter and the disciples went back to fishing. Somehow, they thought that they had been fooled. But the Father's agenda had been fulfilled. The cross was Trinity's plan. Only in God's Son could salvation be done and life could be restored to man. Next, we see Jesus on the seashore calling out to Peter to come and dine. Peter was ashamed, but he still came to hear what Jesus had to say this time. Jesus asked three simple questions. Peter, lovest thou me as I am? Three times we hear a mass where he gives Peter a task, Peter, feed my land. He said, Bill, your agenda for years through blood, sweat, and tears was a destination. Heaven was his name. You tried your best to pass every test. The end result was always the same. When Jesus called Peter from the seashore that day, the question was, lovest thou me? He said, now, Bill, I hope you can see your destination is not heaven. Your destination in love is in me. So come unto me and dine, for you are always mine, not just for the day and tomorrow, but for all time. But I have ought against you. You have left your first love. I never thought. I never thought that I would hear this from my father up above. I quickly went on defense trying to justify my walk, but I knew I needed to listen for it was time for him to talk. Do you remember when you became aware of the love that I had for you? Your world became a small. It was just me and you. What precious communion that we shared. You're due all in there, no bound. Your heart was open to all you met, and no fear could be found. Denomination, Jew or Gentile, never entered into your mind. Your heart was filled with joy and love for God and all mankind. You didn't look around you to judge and measure man. 
you were filled with praise and thanksgiving, even for those who didn't understand. It was joy unspeakable that flooded your hungry heart, a glory past understanding, and you were made a part. You walked praising the love that freely set you free, and when you looked around, all you saw was me. And now your spiritual life has changed for compassion, love, and grace. From compassion, love, and grace, a hardened dogma and critical judgment has slowly taken their place. Though you're very busy doing what you think is right, you use my name with all you meet, telling everyone in sight. You go to church, give to the poor, and visit the sick and old. Wonderful things that should be done without even being told. The odd I have against you has nothing to do with these. It has to do with love alone, for nothing else can please. Return to me, not your things or the work that you can do, or I can create all I want. All I want is you. I saw you. And I'm like, because I love you so, I will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter where you go. Come again, just as you are. Let's walk together, hand in hand. Let me flood your heart with my love. Then you'll understand. I gave you life through my son, so that you might see I not only did this for you, but also did this for me. A child like my only begotten, bone of his bone, you have been fashioned. Many more like my glorious son. This is my ultimate passion. So return again to your first love, and you will once again see that my love for you remains the same. Just turn your eyes on me. And when I behold his creation through the eyes of his love, I know this very love has set me free. Like Peter, I can only say, you know that I love you in spite of what you see. Remember, I love you, and love is the most thank you wow thanks bill so much and as always please uh please email that to me and i'll i'll include it with the with the zoom recording that i send out thank you so much hey, and thank all of you guys for what you've said this morning i love it when you share i love it how we learn from each other and uh uh again for those of us in lawrence we're gonna have a great time with jamie uh, Englehart tonight. If you <clears throat> if you're coming and you haven't yet, let me know. Uh, please do because we're going to have a, a little bigger room than we normally have, and uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a wonderful time. Guys, I love you guys. I'm so glad to be able to to be with you uh, and to spend time with you. Philip, did you have one question? Or is your hand still up for? Yes, um, you've uh, mentioned Jamie, uh, Jamie Englehart. Uh, last week and then again now I was, I'm, I'm sort of curious does he um, uh, have 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 like also a teaching ministry or is he just uh, uh, a traveling oh, yeah. uh, ap apostolic worker or what is yeah he no doing? yeah look at look him up uh, look him up on YouTube and then uh, uh, you'll you'll find his site and all of those things uh, yeah he, he's a, a all of those things and more yeah <laughs> yeah he's uh, He's, yeah, he's, he's just really good. And okay, uh, anything else? Love all of you guys. I look forward I'll to seeing some of you tonight, some of you next time. As Anders would say, shalom. Shalom. See you shalom. soon. Shalom, shalom. shalom.